Welcome to Uncage, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Khalil Sadiq. Hey, Khalil, how are you? Fantastic. Great to be in this space uh, to talk about some great things with you today. Excellent. Well, Khalil, I'm very excited to have you on the show. Khalil is the founder and CEO of 901 Consulting, a racial equity consulting group that has, I think, a really interesting take on the space. The goal to elevate leaders' self-awareness and skills in developing an effective diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy. So we'll talk about more about what 901 Consulting is doing and how they're shaping the market. But before we get there, Khalil, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Yeah, so Khalil Sadiq, I'm originally from Georgia, um, born in a small country town called Camilla. I am a uh -huh. Generation X baby. So that means that I grew up in the 80s. I graduated at the tail end of the 90s. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, um, that was the Clinton era. Uh, after high school, I went directly into the Marine Corps. Uh, mm -hmm. My goal was to get out of my small country town, see the world and get the best training ever. And mm -hmm. so I was able to do that. I um, went into the Marine Corps as a young 70 year old kid um, stationed wow. in South Carolina, got my training at Paris Island. Paris Island, yeah. Uh, first duty station, Hawaii. Uh, got out of the military uh, in 96, moved to Atlanta, and decided that I needed to go back to school. <laughs> yeah. So I went back to school, uh, actually moved from Atlanta to Massachusetts, Cambridge, the home of Harvard. Mm -hmm. And so I moved there with the goal to go back to school. Um, but that didn't quite happen in a straight line. I ended up working and trying to figure out my career goals. Mm -hmm. uh, and so right now, since 2020, I have been a diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging consultant, primarily working with small companies who are at the beginning of their journey, implementing uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging strategies uh, in their culture. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear more about what you're doing at 901 Consulting. I mean, some of the things that really jumped out to me, which I like, resonate with me a lot, is that you're looking for standards that make up superficial progress through the impact we make with our clients. So really kind of pushing past the superficial level and doing things that actions that matter, basically. Right. And that sounds great. So tell me more about what's going on at 901 Consulting. Yeah, so at 901 Consulting, we are really focused on providing companies with what we consider the fundamentals when it comes to creating a culture. And it sits on two axes. One is your operations. How do you run your company? Right. What are the policies that you have in place? Uh, how's your onboarding going? Mm -hmm. How are people advancing through your company? And then the other axis is behavior. How are those policies impacting the people's behavior that work on your company? Do they feel like there's a sense of community? Do they mm -hmm. see that they can advance at your company? Do they have a community that is supporting their well-being? So mm -hmm. these two fundamental things is really what makes up an organization, your operations, and how that operations impacts the behavior of the people that you work with. So we help companies create systems some don't have any systems, so it has to start from the ground up. Right. Some do have systems, but they need to be improved. So uh, we take them through that process. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we follow up to see if we can extend any other services to help advance some of the policies that they may have on, on the table. Khalil, one of the things that I saw was that you do this thing you call trauma-informed facilitation. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you are starting to work with organizations that are in a moment of trauma? Is that why that's outlined in that way? Absolutely. We all are connected to some form of trauma. Right. So that is really where my center is with, when it comes to how we connect it. We all have some form of trauma that we have gone through, but in particular, 
in 2020, it was really amplified. Mm. So we all have some type of traumatic story that we can relate to, to 2020. For that reason, I think it's really important for people who are really trying to transform their culture, they need to have some sense of what trauma is, mm -hmm. how it works, and then how to actually get the best out of people and helping them navigate their traumas. So yeah. trauma-informed really, I think, is a key to any leader in the modern culture right now. You need to have the language about what trauma is, and you need to have the skills of how to help facilitate uh, conversations and facilitate relationships in order to help people navigate what we're all going through, which is some some form of trauma. Yeah, that's really, really insightful. And I think it naturally leads into my next question, because I noticed that 901 Consulting started in July of 2020, which was a summer of a lot of social unrest in the U.S., certainly raised a lot of DE&I issues. A lot of companies started to act for the first time, maybe not meaningfully, but they certainly started to act. And I'd just love to kind of maybe walk through your experience from starting 901 Consulting to where we are now. What are you seeing? Are we moving forward in any meaningful way, or are we still at that kind of lip service level? Yeah, great question. Um, for me in 2020, I actually started as a trauma-informed facilitator, and I still do this work, and I was facilitating a Black leadership group. Mm -hmm. all right? So these are all Black leaders who are all doing kind of the same type of work, diversity, equity, inclusion work. They're in spaces where kind of they're the, they're the only. Right. And when you have that, that is the recipe for burnout. So right. you have these support groups to help people have their sustainability. So during this time period, I'm really learning about how to do this. And we're hearing the different deaths. And the first one was Almond Aubrey. Right. right now I'm facilitating these support groups about trauma and we're all going through trauma as black people. And we're talking right. about this trauma. And I'm like, this is, um, this is more than I expected. When July happened, and uh, the murder of George Floyd, that was my call to action. Um, my, my, you know, part of my journey is that I'm a community activist. I'm a right. community organizer. So my ear is always to the streets, listening right. and trying to find out what's going on. And when George Floyd's murder happened, I knew that I could no longer just be a facilitator. I had to actually go into action. So I said, I'm going to start my own business. And that's what I did. And I centered on, once again, trauma, because that is what actually was the catalyst, the murder of George Floyd. And so that trauma is really what I'm, I'm, I'm centering on so people can learn how to better recognize it and then start having policies and procedures where you know how to navigate it. Uh, and so that's what I'm really teaching my clients. I'm modeling how to have uh, trauma-informed facilitation groups, Right. how to have trauma-informed leadership skills, and then take those skills and put them into to policies and procedures. So, I mean, in July of 2020, you heard a lot of people start to, I mean, I would say the classic kind of Fortune 500 thing was to donate a little bit of money. Suddenly you'd see that they would hire a DEI mm -hmm. director or some kind of variation of that. What are we seeing now? Is the dialogue shifted? Are we making some meaningful moves? We are, but I think just like everything else, when it comes to just the nature of things, you have ups and downs. Yeah. Right. And I think we need to recognize that we're not always going to be at our optimum, at, right. our, at our best. Sometimes we're going to get it right. Sometimes we're not going to get it right. That, and we shouldn't um, have that to make us feel like we're losing or we're failing. It's just the mm. nature of human beings. And that's why it's important to have a process and a system. When you have systems in yeah. place, that is what can capture and help you when you decide that you want to check out. Your system is there to make sure that you can still have that process going on in the background, even when you're burnt out. So right now, you are seeing a lot of companies who are taking diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging seriously. Yeah. And they are um, hiring the right people. But it's a, it's a process. 
This is a long-term process. It's not going to happen in six months or a year. And so whenever we see media posts or we hear information about where we're at in the cycle when it comes to DEIB, um, we have to be mindful. It's just a snapshot in time. It's, right. Sometimes it doesn't tell the entire picture. Um, but for the most part, uh, companies still need to do a lot of more work yeah. because this is totally new. It's, it's almost like a total makeover of your company. And I want to say this also. Um, I would say the majority of our consultants out there have the best interests of the company at heart and they want to make transformational changes and they have the right type of policies and strategies, but some don't. Mm. Some do come in and they have leaders or team members feeling shame and guilt, right? right. Along weaponizing um, race, weaponizing mm. sex, we weaponizing gender. Yeah. And I, with 901, I'm very mindful of that, is that I want to make sure that people or, or my leaders are not entering into this very noble cause blindly. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes there are people who may not have the right, right ideology in the sense that they see all white people as racism. I don't yeah. think that's the proper way to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's this unfortunate binary thinking in the industry. Either you're yeah. this way and you're that way. And that's that's really not it. Uh, there's a right. lot of gray area. So not all consultants are made the same. And I yeah. want to make sure that our, our CEOs, um, particularly those who are, are, are white, because I, I, I understand more how the industry works, um, that they're not being shamed and guilted into adopting uh, DEI policies, but it's done yeah. with the proper way and, and the right uh, type of healing and, and, and um, methodology. Well, I think that what you said at the beginning of that was really insightful, Khalil. I mean, there were two points. One was that this idea that it's not a straight line, right? That we're going to kind of have like ebbs and flows. We're going to make movement forward. There might be a step backwards, but hopefully we're kind of getting there. And we're ultimately trying to do what you said, which is make a positive systemic system, right? right? Like, right? like rebuild that in a way so that the processes are in place, the muscles get there so that we do this kind of instinctively. And that takes a long time for sure, for organizations. And I think you're absolutely right. Maybe in mid 2020, there were some kind of maybe starts that were made. <laughs> so we now have to see those through and see those become real systemic change. But I mean, as you're looking forward, Khalil, I don't like talking about the far future because those things always end up differently. But the near future, what's on the horizon for you? So for me, it's really just to continue to get better, continue to work with executive directors and CEOs, get their feedback about their experience, what's being difficult for them, what's easy for them. Uh, for me, just continue to collect that information and get better as an organization, uh, start adding more uh, e-courses uh, to the work that I do. Um, right now, I'm now seeing there's an opportunity for me now to work with organizations that want to add DEI into their programming. So mm. that's not going to expand my footprint from working with organizations um, who want to implement DEI policies to organizations who want to actually have their own programming to help other organizations who, who may need DEI. So uh, my foot, footprint is expanding. I'm looking forward to speaking with other CEOs who can help me get more information about how I can improve my services and just continue to educate people so they can be better for their, their employees and have a, a thriving um, culture. Absolutely. Khalil, if someone wanted to reach you and learn more about what you're up to, where's the best place to find you? Yes. So you can certainly email me at Khalil at 901consultingboston.com. Uh, you can also phone me. Give me a call. 617-308-0509. That is my mobile phone number. Uh, and of course, you can go to my website, www.901consultingboston.com. So uh, email, website, phone number, Twitter, the same handle, 901consultingboston.com. 
Cage.com. Excellent. Well, Khalil, thank you so much for being on on Cage today. We've been speaking to Khalil Sadiq. He is the founder and CEO of 901 Consulting, which is a racial equity consulting group. We've been talking about his pathway, setting this business up in the summer of 2020 and really pushing forward from delivering, I'd say, trauma services to now building a platform that can build the processes and the systems that we need to make sure that DE&I becomes firmly part of our solutions going forward. Khalil, thank you so much for being on the program today, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you, sir. Enjoy your day. Cheers.